just pencil it in. that features current current things that are taking place with the artists in the community. That's what the magazine is about. And it's not exclusive to any one particular anyone. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be working with professionals as well as uh, amateurs alike. You know, anybody can be in there as long as you're passionate and you have a story to tell about yourself. It's kind of a more of a, a personal situation. You know what I mean? About you first as the person and then it gets off into your, your artwork and the things that you like to do, whether it's writing poetry or singing or anything artistic and creative, okay? Um, when I was down at Comic-Con, I took a lot of business cards for more than one reason, but this was part of it. And um, I've been contacting a lot of these guys, and a lot of these people like the idea, and they're writing their stories. I've been talking to Lindsay um, for the last few nights and such, and she's writing a story about herself, and she will be featured in the book. Now, everyone here is, if you have something that you, first of all, if you're brave enough, take out a challenge like that <clears throat> to open up and I mean you know you don't have to tell all the secrets of your life and things like that you know what I mean but you can you, you have the uh, the privilege to be pretty open about yourself I think that people like to know more about what the person's going through what makes them come up with the ideas what inspires them to do what they do you know what I mean I think that's that's probably the most important part of why you're an artist and then there's your work and then there's your, your, your aspirations and your plans and all these other kind of things, you know. So, what I'm doing is I'm allowing uh, the person telling the story to write their own story. Of course, it has to be edited because this is a professional uh, publication. It will be going out to people from many different walks of life, and some of these people are very, very professional. And they would just expect that a publication would be professional, <coughs> regardless to who it is that is featuring, whether it's kids or adults, you know, or the deceased. You know, someone telling them telling a story about someone in their family who's no longer around, but here's his artwork, and this is what, 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 it, what it all meant to him, whatever, you know, so this, the magazine's going to be pretty wide open with, with, that, with that aspect. Um, I had Lindsay bring her story in today, and I asked her if she would like to read it. How do you feel about that? I can read it. Yeah? Yeah, I wanted to sit on the table over there, though. <laughs> all right, we got to be able to get you on here, though. But I can see you over there. Why not here? why I asked her to bring it in, um, because she took that initiative, and she actually did it. She actually started right now. I don't know if you're done with it. Are you done with it? Yep, we paint for two and a half foot. Okay. And she's going to add images, and I'm going to do the page layout for her, so you'll see pictures of her, and some of her artwork, and her story. Okay? But mind you, a lot of people are going to see this. Okay? Well, I didn't bring anything, like, really personal. Like, I don't keep know. my pants on the first screen. We just recorded all that. So. <laughs> That's what I'm here as well. It will be a from here so. to there. <laughs> so giving up your personal addresses and anything real personal like that, I don't know if that's going to be hard. <laughs> it is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She doesn't want that back. <laughs> this is awesome. This is really, truly really awesome. You enjoy Wait, did you draw that front cover? or? I'll just get it at the end. Well, hold on to you. Unless you want it now. You want it now? Yeah, I, yeah later. Okay, I'll hold on to it. Oh. Yeah, he awesome. also told me that there were going to be English people in there, so I was like working on the English style photos. That's really nice. I like that. That would be like from the 1800s. Yeah. What? I'm just listening. Yeah, that would be like from the like 1800s. You know your style here, your design and everything. Yeah. yeah, she's awesome for that. She's an awesome, excellent reference for anything like for that. For designing too. clothes? Oh my god, yeah. You ever look at her artwork and, and how she, she gets all into that stuff? Very good job. Very good. Um, so, I want to hear the story because, you know, since you, uh, we've been talking about you doing this, and actually this will be the very first story submitted, is Lindsay's story. I have about, uh, I write best. I have about maybe 
four people who are submitting stories, you know, maybe five now because the lady next door, she's interested in doing it as well. So she, and she's got like an English major, so I got a feeling that her story's going to be very, very, very sharp. And she's an excellent artist. You've got to see some of her stuff. She's really good. She's really good. Um, so she'll have a story in here. Hello? That's me. I'm hitting the garbage can. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, let me give you a story. Everybody, you guys want to listen to our story? Mm-hmm. You still work on your artwork and stuff. Yeah, I can't. I have to read it. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Cosplay, a word simply oh. made by combining the words costume and play, can definitely alter one's life for the better. It's just the word, a jargon actually, but maybe it's more than that. Maybe it's something that starts as a hobby and leads to a possible career. Or maybe it's something that allows us to meet new people and express ourselves. Then again, it could just be all that and more. When you meet another otaku for the first time, it sure seems a little intimidating when they answer your question of, how long have you been cosplaying for with, oh, I started in elementary school. It's great to hear that they started with such an interest at a young age, but in my case, it doesn't always mean they're better or have more experience. Sometimes they may just be a total klutz who only has two cosplays and then a whole long list of future ones due to procrastination, which just so happens to sum up my cosplay situation. I officially started cosplaying in the fifth grade with some friends, and unknowingly closet cosplay in the third and fourth grade. Then in middle school, I began to understand more of the concept, more, oh, I think I have a typo there. I read over by Miss Salmo. More of the concept of cosplaying and the art of it. I also realized how it can shape a person and teach them some valuable life lessons. Now in high school, I use what I've gained through cosplay to help myself be a better person. In fact, if it wasn't for cosplay, I don't think my hair would be dyed blonde on one side and brown on the other. When I first became interested in anime, which sparked my interest in cosplay, I was still a little kid, probably in the second or first grade, and my favorite was Himparo. I wasn't aware of anime itself until the third grade, but because of my ignorance at the time, I occupied myself with an interest in video games and drawing. My favorite game then, and now, was The Legend of Zelda series. Ocarina of Time was the first Zelda game I ever played, and I became addicted immediately, constantly playing the game and drawing scenes from it. Luckily, I had the collector's edition, which contained several games, demos, and movies. Even luckier, I still have my collector's edition disc and have added it to my Legend of Zelda collection, which consists of about 44 items. After I found the Legend of Zelda, I found Naruto. Naruto is basically basically what introduced me to anime. Looking back on that fandom now, I'm kicking myself for ever liking it so much since I found better animes, but I can't complain if it helped get me where I am today with my interest. Actually, Naruto is the first anime I ever cosplayed a character from. I was Sakura Haruno, which, much to my dismay, uh, oh yeah, okay, I can't read, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was Sakura Haruno, much to my dismay. I really wanted to be Sasuke, but ended up as her instead. After I had received my cosplay and whatnot, I went to my first con, only a sixth grader. I'll admit I was a bit like a deer in headlights, but hey, I was only 11, and at least I knew what to expect the next time I went. The next year I attended Otakon was 2009, and when I found out, and that's when I found out about Asian ball joint adults. Friendly ladies carried them by the dozens in wagons and strollers, as, as well as in their arms. I wondered what they were lugging around with them, even though they were obviously giant, realistic dolls. When I returned home from the con, I did some research on them and found that they were called Asian ball joint adults, or BJDs slash ABJDs for short. I promptly asked if I could receive one for Christmas, and my awesome mom bought me a Dream of Doll Shao, who I named Luna. Luna was my first BJD, a larger one of 60 centimeters, which is about, like, two feet. And Rosemary, a little fee Luna, is my most recent. This is, like, two and a half pages, so this might be a while. Awesome. <laughs> I like it. It sounds good. My dolls are used for drawing and photography models that I greatly enjoy having. I use them for a lot of macro photography and close-ups. Originally, I used the Fuji Film point-and-shoot camera to take my pictures, but last year I got a Canon Rebel and I'm now using that. I only have two lenses to choose from, a wide-angle lens and a telephoto lens, but my instructor from Photography for Kids occasionally allows me to borrow his lenses. However, dolls aren't the only thing I photograph. I also photograph cosplayers and happily offer or organize shoots with my friends who cosplay, which are far and few, literally. Half of my friends who cosplay live in different states, and the other half I know who live in the same area as me, I don't see often due to school and their jobs. So to entertain myself when I can't do cosplay adult shoots, I draw my characters as, as well as characters from various animes. I started drawing at a young age, five being my best guess, and I'm still drawing today. 
When I first began drawing, I drew a lot of animals like squirrels and birds. Now I draw mostly anime and use colored pencils as my art medium. I've worked with pastels and watercolor, but colored pencils are still my favorite. However, I'll occasionally use chalk pastels or watercolor since I have easy access to both of those. Whenever I draw, I usually use a larger size sketchbook if I'm not drawing digitally. And as of late, I've been drawing a lot of my own characters who are also portrayed through my dolls. Having OCs is, in my opinion, another really neat way to express yourself as long as they aren't Mary Sue's. Not only can you express yourself with them, but you're able to make comics and stories about them that are completely yours and no one else's. Then, to take things to another level, I sew what I draw for my OC so that my dolls can wear their outfits in real life. I'm going to need like a drink after this. <laughs> There's no water fountain. <laughs> Sewing? Oh my gosh, I forgot. <laughs> you uh, forgot your mango thingy? What? Yeah, I forgot the mango stuff. So. Oh, well, I'll just get coffee when I'm after then. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, next time, then, next week. Sewing is something I've always wanted to try, but not until as of late was I actually able to pursue it. I started sewing doll garments two years ago. <laughs> nice one. That's perfect. Should I just keep reading? Oh my gosh. Good thing there are only preliminaries. Coffee fails! Yeah. So this is like the last time when I had that juice, I'm like, let's just all go over there. Yeah. Um, I, I don't remember what it was. I started sewing doll garments two years ago, almost three, and have since moved on to cosplay costumes. My machine is a Kenmore, and although we have a bit of a love-hate relationship, it's still my best sewing machine friend. It's helped me sew tons of little pea dresses for human rosemary, pants for my dolls as well as myself, bags, pillows, and a hopefully soon-to-be-finished Orden Link cosplay from Twilight Princess, which is probably the most ambitious project as of yet. Right now, most of the main pieces to the costume have been made, although it's missing pants and one part needs to be removed. After I fix those two things, I'll be able to start adding the details and embroidering. Who knows how long that will take. Aside from the costumes and doll clothes, sewing has also introduced me to the overall fashion realm. Just because I can't pull off the latest poncho look doesn't mean I'm unaware. Actually, I mostly focus on Victorian slash colonial era and Japanese street fashion clothes. It may not seem like a big, but Victorian era clothes and Japanese street fashion go hand in hand. What I'm most interested in is Lolita. No, not the book but the fashion which is modeled after the Victorian era dresses. The details in the outfits are what allow me to have fun with them using laces and ribbons. What I like best about the Lolita fashion, fashion is that it makes people feel good about themselves. After reading what a lot of other girls have said about the hobby and fashion, I must agree with them. It really does make you feel like a pretty princess, even if you've been told you look like a German girl in a dare like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It seems as though everyone who participates in this hobby no matter where their outfit is from or if they made it themselves, enjoys it and sees the brighter sides of things, learning to respect others and take snide comments lightly and just be who they are. You know, that's true because I, I read your, uh, someone made a comment about that on your, uh, on your Facebook, I think it was. That's true. It's true? I don't remember. Yeah, I think I remember. People tell me I'm weird all the time. It's like, so? <laughs> so? <laughs> like, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> Nothing. Exactly. Right. Aside from the lovely atmosphere and dress making of the Lolita fashion, I also enjoy the accessories Lolitas make. The accessories can be made, they make, and they are probably like none you've ever seen before. Taking things to the extreme, taking things to the extremes with giant bows and over adorable miniature food jewelry. I've been making my own Lolita jewelry for a while now, and I mainly use polymer clay, which is a lot what a lot of girls use to make their jewelry. It's nice to work with because it can be easily molded and doesn't dry out, so there's no set time limit for the piece you're making. Instead, the clay is baked. When I make polymer clay jewelry, I enjoy making teddy bear rings, cake rings, candy cane earrings, cookie earrings, chocolate bar bracelets, and pastry bracelets. Because I don't dress in Lolita often, I try to make the jewelry practical, and sometimes I'll sell it to my friends to make a few extra dollars. It's an awesome feeling to see other people wearing something you put time into and made yourself. As you can see, cosplay has really affected me for the better and allowed me to learn and experience new things as well as meet new people. Whoever thought cosplay could alter a person like this? Because of anime and cosplay, I've learned that one hobby generally leads to another. I found out about ball jointed dolls, photography, drawing, sewing, lolita fashion, and jewelry making. All of these, all of which these hobbies have helped me, helped shape me into who I am and just overall made me feel good about myself. 
Hobbies are a way that we can express ourselves, and in my opinion, they're something we should all have and be able to enjoy. They can truly teach us about ourselves and others. That's my thing for you. Oh, oh, let me see that. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Where did that come from? Did she just draw that? Oh, yeah. That was last time. You just did this just now? No, yeah. She had that. Didn't, isn't this the one from last time, though? Yeah. And then you added that one in? And uh, he said it was about to slip. Oh, that's right, that's right. He's supposed to be doing a cart. That's right. He's slightly Sorry. tilted, then he goes into his cartwheel and his ninja. Did you create this, or did you see this in a book somewhere? I just make it out of my mind. Awesome. I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought that. I wouldn't have either. This is excellent. This is excellent. It's amazing. Yay! Yes, seriously. This is excellent. Do you have any ideas for colors that you want to? I'm not, really good color. I'm not really good color. Well, you got the red one, you got the black one too, right? Mm -hmm. So you have like, oh man, this is going to be awesome. It's like a dead one and a live one. Or if you do one, it could be like one that smokes and one doesn't smoke. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> but you should say that too with the other drawing I just made. She said it looked like 3D. Next semester, I'm going to be talking about copyright, really going into it. I'll be bringing the forms in and everything. Oh, my gosh. Um, so that you guys can um, get an idea of what it, what it is, take copy home, read about it, look, look it up, do a little bit of research and such. Because everyone here has original drawings and original ideas. And I, like I said before, um, these are good ideas. And they should be protected and they should be, uh, you know, they should be looked into taking seriously. Not stolen by the guy who makes Naruto. Right. Or the lady who voices him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think of um, Lindsay's story? Yeah, it was kind of good. good. Huh? You liked it? Yeah. What do you think, Lydia? It was good. Good, right? Yeah. yeah that's awesome. Now, you guys um, can write a story as well. Okay? I like to have as many um, stories <clears throat> as I possibly can. Um, and not only that, but what I plan on doing is doing updates on these stories. Okay? Uh, there's going to be plenty of room in the magazine for more columns and, and things like that. You know, So I like to cover a story about this class and, and within that, <clears throat> cover stories about each one of you guys individually. Who's ever up to the You don't have to do it. It's not necessary that you have to do it. But if you'd like to have a little story and it doesn't have to be as long as, uh, as Lindsay's, you can have up to one to three pages. Like what we like in this class? No, whatever you want to talk about. Okay. You know, but it's mostly about yourself and, and, and your artistic background. Something with you and your artwork and, and that kind of thing. Like, like how she was explaining a thing or two, you know, like they do. Okay. Nothing too personal. Yeah, nothing about peeing your pants. Ew. <laughs> yeah, nothing like that. I can't that. really say that out to the world. Oh, speaking about peeing your pants. <laughs> speaking of which. I hope I don't have to go to fill the screams today. Just bring extra underwear. That's what my friend did. It's actually part. really not. What? What are what? you? Are you going to go through the whole entire thing? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't, but I don't know about the Den of Darkness. But yeah, I think we're doing the Den of Darkness first. My friends my are friends not allowed to touch you this year. <laughs> Really? Last year they were like touching your ankles, and the one this one guy pinned me to like a wall, and then he he like scared the crap out of me, and then I ran, and then we like ran through the rest of the um the asylum. But uh, it's like my first year in Field of Screams, and my friend Cameron said that there were like people in like actually dressed up as checkerboards, like in the strobe yeah. lighting place. Yeah, that place. That's and kept on fa falling on his face because he t couldn't like tell. <laughs> Someone's gonna have a seizure. Hey, how old do you have to be to work there? Um, what? I'm not, I'm not sure. It's voluntary. Like, they volunteer. I'm not sure if they'll pay you. I'm a five-year-old sure kid. Like, I'm 16, maybe. I'm not sure. I need something to do. <laughs> what? Let me see what you got oh. so Lindsay. I mean, uh, Lydia. <clears throat> I'm just, like, totally being in the way, aren't I? No. <laughs> like, everyone's, like, trying to look over me. I took my shoes off, by the way. So, I don't think anything's going to smell, but... Yeah, I think you do you think you'd be interested in writing a story? Maybe. Okay. Think about it. It's when you have time. I mean, you're extremely busy, too. So yeah, it is. I am. But I think I can get a pretty good story out of you. I think you'll write a pretty good one. It's really interesting. But you'll have time if you don't do your homework. 
I'm taking pre-alge. Close that. Close she block her view. Close the thing. Close it? Yeah. Where is the, cor the coin? Just close it. 